All right, board gaming enthusiasts, we've got some recommendations incoming. Solo gaming. Solo card gaming. For the gamer who wants a little bit of a challenge, what recommendations would I have? And we're going to lay over sci-fi. That, that was the second. I'm condensing the, the comment from my blog on there. Certainly, I love dungeon crawlers. Um, Runebound, amazing, fantastic, third edition. Pathfinder, the adventure card game, amazing, love it. Hold off on that because there is a reprint updated new edition coming on there. And it's, it's going to add more content and be more universal with the core. So it's, it's worth waiting on that. Um, but on the sci-fi perspective. So my first question in recommendation for a card-based sci-fi game. Solo to group ratio. Are you going to play this with a group mainly? Are you going to play it mainly solo? Or is there a little bit of a crossover on there? And because that's going to change my recommendations, uh, the response was primarily solo, maybe occasionally with a group, but mainly solo. So the difference um, in terms of a card game difficulty level on that, if you are playing solo, uh, this is just my perspective, if you're going to primarily play solo with a card game, you want it to be more difficult, you want it to be more challenging, almost to the point where it kicks you every single time. Even if there's a little bit of frustration, I'd be willing to tolerate a little bit more frustration simply because I can play it at my own pace. Um, a solo type game, you could set it up, you have 10, 15 minutes to spend, you play a little bit, you leave it out, you come back in a day or two, or you're unwinding, you've got a couple of hours to play. It doesn't have the same um, gaming weight that you would have where you bring this to a gaming club, you've got four or five people that have taken time out of their life and your schedule too to play. And do you want to invest an hour or two or three of your life? Cause things do slow down when there are more players analysis, paralysis, decision-making. Do you want to do that? And then just get crushed and creamed at the end on there. It's, it's different. That's not to say you can't. So I would recommend solo something a little bit more challenging. Something let's 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 kind of push it in that direction. My recommendation, well, the splash screen gave it away. Xeno Shift. It's a card based game. It's a base building, deck building, lane defense type thing. You are defending an outpost and you have some starting cards, some starting units, based on a random deck of stuff that you can buy. Uh, you purchase equipment through Xenosathium, which is kind of the currency that you're mining to upgrade units to give them abilities. And you have to survive multiple waves. And it, there's random monsters, monsters, abominations, aliens, crazy stuff in every wave. And at the end of each um, third wave, you fight a boss monster. That's insane. If you don't stop the lane defense, your base takes damage. When the base has no damage left to take, everything's overrun. I mean, a, a pretty interesting concept on there. It is challenging. It is challenging because there's no dice involved. So the cards, the monster cards, the aliens, they deal their damage. Now, you have ways to mitigate it. You deal your damage at the same time. Both happens at the same time except for a couple of interrupts that you might have or some of the monsters might have. And it really has this feeling of you're sending units out wave after wave of these relentless aliens uh, attacking you. And it really chews you up and it really destroys you. No spoilers. Even to the point where you start to learn. I mean, every game has that. You start to learn the optimization of equipment and units based on what you think you're possibly going to to take and utilize even with that the game has enough variety of monsters and combinations and triggers that you always have to hold something a little bit in reserve or you're always looking and saying here's my primary strategy um, based on the cards and based on what's in the resources the shop to buy but you know i better have a backup strategy in there i better kind of hold that in reserve playing it from that perspective um, being a card game sets up fast doesn't take up much space break down put away really really fast on there what else is interesting that adds a little bit more random 
is you get at the beginning uh, like a, a base, a base module. It could be a med bay, could be an armory, could be a science lab. And uh, certainly you can pick the one you want to use, and we all have our favorites based on play style. But in the rules, and what I prefer is to randomly select the sector that you're in charge of, the base. And from there, that changes things with abilities and unlocks and what you can do based on the wave. The artwork is amazing. It plays really well. It is really, really brutal on there. And it works. In terms of bringing it to a gaming group and stuff, it's it's challenging on there. It plays really well with two people because now you're both defending your base and you have the strategy to, I can take something like um, a mine resource card and play it in my lane or I can pass it to you to play in your lane. If you have a unit that can buff, you can choose to buff something on my side. So we have the synergy based on the wave that we're fighting and we each fight our own wave at the same time. If something really crazy appears in your wave, I can take some of my resources and, and use it for you to help you because we're both defending the same base maybe opposite sides of the base but then that makes me weaker on there so it's interesting the co-op since you're both defending the base at the same time it's interesting because at the beginning of every round and as every reveal happens you are real time discussing and making tactical decisions that you need to make and be on top of that said those tactical decisions can take a little while to think out and play so that adds to game time if it's not solo, and would you be okay investing game time and playing with someone where we just played this game three times in a row and we made it to wave three and it just obliterated us every single time? Some people are going to rage quit on that. Some people are going to rage fest on that. Some people might embrace the pain and the punishment and push it from that perspective. But that would be my recommendation, Xeno Shift for solo. And I have to say for someone that um, plays it to my pile of solo games even after multiple 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 plays I, I still really enjoy it it works you know does what it says on the box works really well invokes that image and really has that feeling in a very very compact form of defending your base at all costs